Welcome to the ultimate Disney World food video. Be prepared for lots and lots of epic eats and mouthwatering desserts and fun and fruity cocktails, as well as tons of extra pro tips along the way to help you make the most out of your next bout of Disney dining experiences. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. You know it, I know it, most everybody knows it. Disney World is a big, big place with tons and tons of food, hundreds, hundreds of restaurants. So today's DFB mission is to highlight a bunch of our favorite eats and treats and drinks around Disney property to give you a better idea of what you might want to try on your next Disney World trip too. Before we get started, I want to let you know that despite all the different food we're going to talk about today, there's literally hundreds of restaurants and lounges and snacks around Disney World property just waiting for you. We have the DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining available at dfbstore.com to make sense of it all. This three-part guide is going to break down the basics of Disney World restaurants while also hyping up our favorite quick service and table services and helping you to create the best food and drink budget for you, specifically you. Be sure to type in the code YouTube before you check out over there on dfbstore.com to save money on your total guidebook purchase if you decide to buy. And remember that guide is 100% money back guaranteed. If you don't like it, great, no problem. We'll get you your money back immediately. Okay, let's get started. We are going to start this video off with the loaded burnt end fries at Regal Eagle Smokehouse in Epcot. Now, I know we've just started the video and all, but I've actually got a hack for making these even better. But first, let's talk about what makes them so good in the first place. These loaded fries are like three favorite snacks in one. For around 13 bucks, you can get these seasoned french fries with burnt ends. By the way, the french fries don't have burnt ends. It's the meat, the burnt ends. Get it? Okay. All right. There's macaroni and cheese on top of it and beer battered onion rings. Now the fries and onion rings are super seasoned and salty, but the creaminess of the macaroni and cheese balances all that out. Also be warned, this meal can be really messy, especially when you're splitting it with a bunch of people in the group. So make sure you grab a fork and plenty of napkins. Okay, now for that hack. There are plenty of barbecue dipping sauces out in the open you can grab yourself, but if you're wanting to add that garlic aioli to drizzle all over your fries, like the same garlic aioli they use on the barbecue burgers, then you can ask a cast member behind the counter for a little bit of that as well. Going back to an old favorite here for this next one, the oat grilled filet mignon at Gico. We got a lot of good things to say about the restaurants you can find at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, but Gico and its African sunset walls, an open kitchen, an upscale dining room, take things to a whole other level. But what should you plan on ordering when there are just so many stellar options to choose from? Well, you can order anything you want because it's all probably gonna be good. But a guest favorite is that oat grilled filet mignon with the rainbow cauliflower and chocolate red wine demi gloss. Now, those of you who are yelling at me about the rainbow cauliflower, I get it and I understand that the Gico filet belongs with the Gico mac and cheese and you can order it. Just let your server know that you'd rather have the mac and cheese instead of whatever random veg they have with it and they will give you that instead. Now, this is a nice steak we're talking about, so you're gonna expect to pay a hefty price, around 52 bucks. But if you're looking to pay under 50 for a good entree at Gico, we also recommend trying the Heritage Chicken for 37 instead. That's a surprising citrusy take on your average chicken breast. And I know you're on vacation, you probably don't wanna order like a chicken breast. I get it, I understand, it's okay. Now this is gonna be a new one for a lot of you. Trader Sam's Grog Grotto, the Thai chicken flatbread. So this is one of our favorite bars slash lounges. It's over at Disney Polynesian Village Resorts, usually most known for its creative cocktails and immersive bar atmosphere, but don't forget about the appetizers they serve here too, especially if you're planning on having more than one cocktail because those drinks are strong. Now when the DFB team and I go here, we usually order a little bit of everything and we split it among the group. And the Thai chicken flatbread stands out as one of the most unique appetizer options since it's topped with bacon and peanut sauce, which you don't normally find on your average cheese flatbread. Now, if you prefer your flatbread with a little more crunch, this one might disappoint you since it's on the fluffier side of things. But if you love hearty chunks of chicken and a sweet twinge of flavor from the PB sauces, then yeah, give this $13 flatbread a go. Even if the indoor grog grotto section of Trader Sam's is packed out when you're there, don't forget about the outdoor Tiki Terrace. They serve the same drinks and eats and normally have a much easier walk-up availability. So based on the last few dishes we talked about, you're gonna catch on to something real quick, which is many of the best eats in Disney World are hiding around the Disney World resorts and lounges. So take the warm manchango and Oaxaca cheese dip at Three Bridges Bar and Grill. 
This is an open air restaurant, not the dip, the three bridges. It's an open air restaurant on the waters of Disney's Coronado Springs Resort and its cheese dip is just a big old shareable bowl of chorizo, roasted red peppers, and toasty cheesy goodness with a side of tortilla chips for 14 bucks. Need something to wash it all down? Three Bridges is also known for those house-made sangrias. If you have a hard time choosing just one out of the four on the menu, get the sangria flight to sample them all. It's really quite amazing. So you may not be able to live on bread alone, but that doesn't mean I don't try to defeat the odds every now and then, especially when it comes to restaurants that have really good bread, like Raglan Road in Disney Springs. First off, Raglan starts your meal with this nice soft Irish soda bread on the house. With a side of bread dipping sauce made of a Guinness reduction in olive oil, it's really sweet. Now that Guinness reduction is gonna give the dipping sauce a bit of a honey flavor. So it's kind of like dipping bread in honey, but there's a little zing to it as well. And in the past, you've been able to find this same sauce in the attached gift shop. So you might still be able to try out this dipping sauce on your grocery store bread back home without having to make a reservation here. But I think you should just go to Raglan Road. Now there have been a few instances where we've gone to Raglan and they broke our sad little carb filled hearts by not bringing us out any bread, but more often than not expect it to come to your table and try not to fill up on it before your main entree arrives, which can be easier said than done. But I'm not done talking about Raglan Road bread just yet because this restaurant also has a Jair's bread and butter pudding, which they describe on the menu as like no other you have tried, believe us and believe them you shall. Here's our not so secret tip about this bread pudding. It comes served in a bowl and the caramel sauce and vanilla anglaise on the side are awesome, but if you just pour them on top of the bread pudding in the bowl, they're not gonna get all the way down to the bottom of the bread pudding. So dump the bread pudding out of the bowl and then pour the sauces on top for maximum sauce saturation. Yes, we are all about physics here. Now this is what I'm talking about quite a few times in recent videos, so maybe you'll get the chance to go try it out. Technically, there is a lot to love when it comes to Steakhouse 71 over at Disney's Contemporary Resort. There's the bacon and eggs, there's the French onion soup, there's the steakhouse cuts on the dinner menu, which you can order with that sauce flight. But we're in the mood for a really good, savory and cheesy burger. And so we've got to get the Stack Burger, hands down. Now the Stack Burger is a signature blend of beef topped with pork belly, American cheese, lemon aioli, red onion, and house-made pickles. It's all in a brioche bun. Now it sounds fancy, what with that pork belly in place of your typical bacon, as well as that citrusy mayonnaise and the pickles that didn't just come out of a jar. But don't be fooled. This is a roll up your sleeves, open your mouth as wide as you can kind of burger. Basically, it reminds us of a quality diner burger smashed on the griddle, you know the ones. You get a ton of salt and a little bit of grease, but in the best way possible. And the cheese is all drippy and melty, like a cheese waterfall straight out of my dreams. Now, if you can't get a reservation for Steakhouse 71, great news, the Stack Burger is also available at the lounge, which has first come, first serve seating. Now, a lot of people don't know about this next one. It's a savory Disney Springs appetizer, and it really needs to be on your list. It's one of my absolute favorites. For 16 bucks, you can get the shareable truffle potato chips at Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill, which is basically a fancy plate of potato chip nachos covered in a Point Reyes blue cheese sauce. But those potato chips are house made and truffled, so they're gonna be amazing. It's not just the blue cheese sauce you have to look forward to either. There are also blue cheese crumbles sprinkled on top to give them another layer of cheesy texture. And here's the thing, I don't love blue cheese. It is not my favorite, but for some reason, this just hits the spot. So this might work for you, even if you're not normally like a super huge blue cheese fan. Now, the nice part about this that sets it apart from most nachos out there is that the chips don't really get soggy since they're a pretty thick cut. So we rarely talk about the Hollywood Brown Derby signature restaurant in Disney's Hollywood Studios without shouting out their famous Cobb salad in the same breath. And that's for a good reason. This has truly stood the test of time. It's made table side with several fresh ingredients, including those finely chopped greens and turkey breast, chicken, egg, tomatoes, crumbled blue cheese, avocado, chives, and Cobb dressing. The table side preparation allows the salad to be really fresh as opposed to soaking up all that dressing while sitting around in the kitchen and then arriving to you soggy and gross, which is much appreciated. Once again, this is a dish that goes heavy on blue cheese, but you can totally ask for your salad to be prepared without or any of the other ingredients that may not tickle your fancy. Now, much like Steakhouse 71, if you can't get a reservation for Hollywood Brown Derby, you can always try to get walk-up seating at its lounge the day of your visit, which still has the famous Cobb salad as an option on that limited Hollywood Brown Derby lounge menu. And since we're already on the subject of lounges, I'm gonna cheat a little bit here with this next point because there are so many things I wanna tell you about at Disney World's lounges. And I don't have enough points in this video to talk about all of them. 
So here are just a few of our favorite eats and drinks at lounges that don't get enough attention. First up, the grilled vegetable skewers at Bar Riva and Disney's Riviera Resort. That's a harissa marinated vegetable skewer made with plant-based cucumber yogurt, tomato lemon vinaigrette, and quinoa salad served over a grilled pita. You can also add chicken or shrimp to this bar favorite for just a few dollars extra. The Tequila Daisy at Dahlia Lounge in Grand Destino Tower is like an upscale version of a margarita made with a mixture of tequila and orange brandy, grapefruit, lime, hibiscus flavoring, and soda water. Now, this is definitely on the lighter side of the cocktail world if you're looking for something more refreshing and less booze laden. Also, Dahlia Lounge is just beautiful, y'all. I don't know why people don't go up there. It is stunning floor to ceiling windows. It's like a two story lounge. It's absolutely gorgeous and I can't recommend it highly enough. If you have a date night or if you have an evening free, Dahlia Lounge, that's where you need to go. Now also the handcrafted cheese and charcuterie at Geyser Point Lounge in Disney's Wilderness Lodge. It serves two guests and comes with a board full of meats and cheeses and toasted sourdough slices. You've got prosciutto, salami, Parmesan Reggiano, arugula, mini pickles, honey grain mustard, and a jar of pate like duck roulette. Now keep in mind that some of those charcuterie offerings could be different during your next visit depending on what's fresh and available during the season. All right, we sure do love ourselves a good secret menu and Skipper Canteen at Magic Kingdom has one of the best. The secret menu at Skipper Canteen changes up frequently, much like all secret menus around property do. But the hush hush item here that usually is available is the Pau de Queijo, the Brazilian cheese bread. This bread keeps things simple. It's just little balls of bread stuffed with soft cheese on the inside and served with a side of chimichurri cream cheese. It's plump, it's savory, it's delightful. To order this one, you're gonna have to ask your server about what's on the secret menu on the day of your visit, and then you just gotta cross your fingers and hope that they list off this Brazilian cheese bread as one of the options. Or if you're visiting the parks during Epcot Food and Wine Festival, you can also find the same bread at the Brazil booth with no reservations required. All right, who's ready for a vacation to Italy? Okay, we're heading to the Italy Pavilion in Epcot, but that's close enough. At both Tutto Italia and its attached wine cellar themed lounge, Tutto Gusto, you can order the Tagliere charcuterie board, which comes with lots of different fancy meats and cheeses and artichoke carts and grassini breadsticks and Serignola olives. To be fair, this is one of the higher priced charcuteries that you'll find on the Disney scene, setting you back about 42 bucks, but it does serve two people and doesn't skimp out on all the different ingredients, which might prove to be the perfect complement to your glass of wine or your wine flight. Now, there are plenty of other things to get here that are at lower price points. I just do recommend Tudo Gusto. It's such a lovely little cave of a lounge and a lot of people don't even know it's there. Of course, we couldn't make this list without talking about the iconic Indian style bread service over at Sanaa at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge. While this bread service does come pretty steep at around 21 bucks, it comes with five different breads and nine dipping accompaniments, including a roasted red pepper hummus, mango chutney, spicy jalapeno lime pickle, and more. Now, if you don't have a reservation for Sanaa, no worries. The Sanaa Lounge, which also has first come first serve availability, has a few appetizers on their menu that come straight from the main Sanaa menu, including that amazing bread service. Now, if you're not planning on visiting this deluxe resort during your next visit, you can also order a similar style bread service from the Tiffin Signature Restaurant and Nomad Lounge and Tusker House inside Animal Kingdom. But if you want to skip the table service expense altogether, I'd stick with Nomad Lounge for your bread fix, a place we'll talk more about later in the video. Don't you worry. So if you have a picky eater on your hands or you're just looking for a satisfying yet affordable comfort food meal in the Disney Springs shopping district, may I highly suggest that you and your crew head to Chicken Guy? That's Guy Fieri's flagship restaurant there. This restaurant has grilled chicken tenders and regular chicken tenders and they're kind of combined into a bunch of different dishes alongside classic American sides like fries and slaw and mac and cheese. But one of the best parts about this fast food joint is all the different signature sauces you can choose from. There are 22 of them. You'll be able to choose two sauces to go along with your chicken tenders, but if you wanna choose even more, all additional sauces will cost you an extra 50 cents a piece, which could very well be worth it for you sauce connoisseurs out there. Think about it, if you wanna try every single one, it's only gonna cost you 10 bucks because you already got the two for free, get it? Okay. The Ohana noodles at Ohana, or someplace else. So you guys might be tired of hearing about these, but I am not tired of talking about them. The Ohana noodles from Ohana at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort are still some of my favorite things to eat in all of Disney World. 
Now, these delicious little ribbons of savory goodness always seem to wind up on our best snacks list year after year. They are salty and sweet and have a really great soy flavor to them. They're basically just lo mein noodles, but anyway, the same thing goes for the Ohana bread pudding too, and that comes at the end of your meal. We just absolutely love this desserty bread served a la mode with a warm homemade caramel sauce. Now, while Ohana can be one of the toughest restaurants to make a reservation for in all of Disney World, it is just that popular. Oh, by the way, before I finish this point, here's a tip. If you go in and search for restaurants that have availability, Ohana is going to be right at the top because it starts with an apostrophe. So if you don't see it, that means it doesn't have any availability right at the top. Now, you can still order both the noodles and the bread pudding from the secret menu at the nearby Tambu Lounge. Just ask your server about them the next time you visit. More than likely, they'll be able to hook you up as long as it's after 4 p.m. So what's better than mac and cheese? Baked mac and cheese. And what's better than baked mac and cheese? Baked mac and cheese with pulled pork and barbecue sauce. You can find this snack-sized dish over at Eight Spoon Cafe inside Disney's Animal Kingdom. It's a teeny tiny kiosk. You'll walk right by it unless you know what's there. Now, the barbecue sauce drizzled on top is a great combo with the tender pulled pork. And that baked cheese has a nice, almost crisp texture to it, complementing the super soft noodles. Then you pair it all together with the pickles and perfecto. Better yet, this is a hearty, savory snack you can purchase for under seven bucks. Hello. However, if you want a full size of this baked mac and cheese with an additional crispy onion ring to go along with it, hit up the Flame Tree Barbecue right across the little street thing instead. Now, heads up, they're only going to give you like one or two onion rings. So I don't know, maybe you need to level up and get a side of onion rings to make sure you have extra onion rings. I don't know. This is starting to get expensive. Now, Polite Pig is well known for its award-winning barbecue. The people that run Polite Pig, James and Julie Petrakis, also run some of the most popular and recognized restaurants in Orlando. If you've ever heard of Ravenous Pig, Cask and Larder, that's them too. But don't get too distracted by the actual meat here that you miss out on all the premium sides. So the Polite Pig takes the standard coleslaw and baked beans that you usually get alongside traditional barbecue and, and amps it up a notch with items like crispy Brussels sprouts with whiskey caramel, grilled street corn, sweet potato tots, and tomato and watermelon salad. Now, while most of the entrees will come with either one or two of these market sides, you can also purchase them individually for six bucks each. And then be sure to stick around for the bourbon bar, because this quick service has a selection of 50 different bourbons at all times. So if you're of drinking age, you might want to give one or two a try. Seafood is the name of the game at the Boathouse in Disney Springs, Obvi, and one of its most popular seafood selections here is the Jumbo Lump Crab Cake. The crab cake tends to be heavy on the crab and light on the breading, which is exactly how you want a crab cake to be, while still having a great sear on the outside that adds a little extra crunch to every bite and, of course, a little extra flavor. And that brandied cocktail sauce that comes along with it, that gives the crab a much-needed extra bit of tanginess and creaminess. But don't just stop with the crab cakes here, folks. This is one of my favorite places to grab a cocktail too for the duck duck raz alone which i know you're gonna raz me for get it oh that was bad this drink is a mixture of blue curacao blueberry stoli of course it's blue curacao this is disney right blueberry stoli raspberry stoli peach schnapps lime juice and simple syrup now it's topped with the best part of all a teeny tiny mini rubber duck please don't eat this it's not a real duck it's a rubber duck you can take it home as a souvenir and have it in your bathtub forever now, sometimes the smallest Disney quick services have some of the biggest eats, and that includes Sleepy Hollow refreshments over in Magic Kingdom. Now, I know y'all know what I'm going to talk about. Not only does Sleepy Hollow refreshments have a phenomenal view of Cinderella Castle from where it's located in Liberty Square, but it also offers a variety of sweet treats and savory snacks, including, say it with me, those hearty waffle sandwiches. The fresh fruit waffle sandwich comes slathered in chocolate hazelnut spread Nutella. Yeah, it's basically just a giant jar of Nutella in there if you look in the kitchen. And it's stuffed with strawberries, bananas, and blueberries, making it super filling, easy to share, and all for under 10 bucks. Plus fruit, y'all, it's super healthy. But if you don't mind paying a little extra for a waffle sandwich that's more savory, the sweet and spicy chicken waffle sandwich comes with broccoli slaw and a honey sriracha glaze served with a side of house-made chips. Now to state the obvious, this one is pretty spicy, so don't order it thinking the sweet will overpower the heat. And when I say pretty spicy, you know I mean Disney spicy, right? It's not, it's not like overwhelming. Don't, don't freak out. But 
If the heat is what you're after, then this take on your typical chicken sandwich is one we can highly recommend to all our spice lovers out there. And how about that? Disney had this before the whole hot chicken sandwich situation was even a thing. Good for them. How on trend. Time to take it into the heart of New Orleans without stepping foot outside the Disney bubble. How are we going to do it? Magic, of course. We're going to Scat Cats Club. This is a soulful, jazz-filled joy of a lounge located at Disney's Port Orleans Resort French Quarter. But even though the live jazz music only happens here on the evenings during the weekends, the beignets are served here all the time with some of the most unique beignet options out there, including those savory beignets served with the dipping sauces like red pepper jelly, pimento cheese, and green goddess dressing. You've got the boozy beignets here, piped with your choice of Bailey's Irish cream liqueur, Kahlua, or rum chata, and oyster beignet po'boys too. Yeah, I wow. I mean, is this a theme park? No, it's a resort. You get it. The only downside to getting those more savory beignet options is that appetizers are only served at the lounge between 5 and 10 p.m. But the Scat Cats Cafe is open all day long and serves lots of beignet stylings too, including those Mickey beignets, the beignet sundaes, specialty beignets that change up their flavors each season, and your traditional powdered sugar beignets too, which will come with one dipping sauce of your choice, either salted caramel, strawberry, or chicory chocolate ganache, which is kind of like a coffee flavor. But each additional dipping sauce that you want to add to your sauce artillery will cost an extra 99 cents per dipping cup. All right, time for festival foods, y'all. You knew it had to be part of this, right? Epcot's got a ton of great food and snacks that I'm not going to be featuring throughout the remainder of today's video, but it's not fair to not at least shout out our favorite way to eat around this park, and that's around the different Epcot festival food booths. Epcot has four different festivals that take place in the park each year, including Festival of the Art, which of course we call farts, as you know, Flower and Garden, Food and Wine, and Festival of the Holidays. Each fest brings lots of unique food booths to the park, which means even more options for snacks and drinks that pull from international influences and fresh ingredients and kind of interesting, sometimes shocking flavors that make us wonder what on earth we just ate and should we really order it again for the sake of science. We love exploring all the different festivals so much that we have a free digital guide dedicated to just the Epcot festivals alone, which will help give you insight into the best eats and activities and entertainment for every single one. Now we do have downloadable guides that you can pay for for each of these, but I, you know, you can start with the free one and see if you like what we put out. If you want to download this festival guide today, just scan the QR code you see on the screen or head over to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash festivals after this. Okay, we're back at Geyser Point Bar and Grill. I know, we briefly talked about this place earlier, but Geyser Point deserves more stage time than that because this bar and grill is a hidden gem. It's got a bison burger that is so tasty, I'd pick it over a deluxe burger from Disney Springs. That's a hashtag hot take, my friends. Now, the bison burger is 21 bucks, comes topped with bacon, sweet crispy onion straws, marionberry sauce, lettuce, tomato, and garlic aioli. It's also served with a side of lightly battered waffle fries that I could have a few orders of in one sitting and still want more. What makes this burger so good though, is that the bison doesn't taste super gamey. Instead, the meat is juicy and cooked perfectly. Tons of fresh, unique toppings and textures to enjoy with every bite. And don't be scared that this doesn't have flavor. A lot of times bison is a leaner meat than what you would get with a regular hamburger, but it does still have quite a bit of flavor. And that's why they have had it on the menu for so long. Even though people are a little scared to try it, they love it when they do. And since this is a bar we're talking about here, we might as well order a drink or four to go along with our meal. Don't worry, I'm not talking about four full-size cocktails. Throughout the year, Geyser Point features seasonal margarita flights, giving you the chance to sample all their limited time flavors for 22 bucks. All right, I don't care who you are, adventurous eaters and picky eaters alike, you're both going to find something to fall in love with at Satuli Canteen in Animal Kingdom. While the customizable bowls make up the majority of the menu here, our go-to meal continues to be the cheeseburger pods from both the adult menu and the kids menu. The bao bun-like dough around the outside of the pod is soft and chewy, and the inside is like a ground-up Mickey D's cheeseburger. These pods also come with a side of vegetable slaw and vegetable chips and a few fruity bursting boba pearls, which gives this dish a really different splash of citrusy flavor if you eat the pearls in the same bite as your cheeseburger pod, which I know a lot of you picky eaters are not going to do, and that is totally okay. Now, the adult menu version comes with two pods, priced at a little over 13 bucks. Well, the kids version comes with one pod, but also includes a drink and a mandarin orange along with it for about nine bucks. 
Now, next up, of course, we're going to talk about literally everything at Garden Grill, aren't we? Aren't we friends? Because we all love Garden Grill, right? So since Garden Grill over in Epcot is a family style, all you care to enjoy dining experience where all the food is brought straight to you, I feel like I can't leave anything out this time because it's all worth trying at least once. Garden Grill is a character dining experience open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's right, breakfast is back, yay! That has a rotating menu of harvest fresh skillets and good old comfort food classics. For lunch and dinner, expect options like grilled beef and roasted chicken, spoon bread, veggies, berry shortcake, and fresh salad, featuring ingredients straight from the land pavilion itself. And if you come here for breakfast instead, you're going to be treated to lots of traditional morning fare, including eggs and those Mickey waffles, cinnamon breakfast loaf, and even a less traditional grilled flank steak with ranchero sauce to shake things up a little bit with that steak and eggs. Now, the cinnamon breakfast loaf does not look the same as it used to when it was just that big cinnamon bake, but it is still excellent. You're going to think that it's going to be dry, but it's not. So go ahead and give it a shot. It's hard to say there's just one correct thing to order at Chef Art Smith's homecoming in Disney Springs because there isn't just one correct thing to order. So that's why it's hard. Now, the restaurant is like a smorgasbord of high quality southern cooking with a twist. We got options like Key West Shrimp Cocktail, House-Made Hush Puppies, Moonshine Cocktail Flights, that Hummingbird Cake, and for those of you who love side dishes even more than your main entree, there's even a kitchen plate option where you can choose three sides as your main entree. So basically this is heaven. But if you can only choose one option out of the many, many, many solid things featured on this menu, then you might want to play it safe and go with the fan favorite thigh high chicken and biscuits. This appetizer is made with cheddar biscuits, the restaurant's iconic fried chicken, and bread and butter pickles. Then the whole thing is drizzled in hot honey. If you don't mind a little spice and you love bread and chicken, then you won't regret grabbing these, and who doesn't love bread and chicken? The sliders come in an order of three, making them plenty hearty enough to be a meal on their own, but if you're eyeballing something else that you want to try on the menu, these biscuits are super easy to share with the whole group. Oh, it's time to talk about Tonga Toes. I imagine a lot of you watching this video are pretty new to the channel, which is great. But those of you who have been with us for a while definitely have heard about the Tonga Toes. So this is a delicious, giant, absolutely thick with double C's, cinnamon sugar covered, banana filled, deep fried breakfast item has been a longtime favorite of Disney fans and all of us here at DFB. However, there isn't just one Tonga Toast out there. Kona Cafe and Captain Cook's at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort both have this delicious dish. So does one of them do it better? Well, it depends on who's asking. In general, we prefer to order it at Captain Cook's because it's a whole lot cheaper there, about $11 versus $17. But Kona's version does come with a strawberry compote drizzled on top. So if that's, you know, worth six bucks to you, there you go. But if you'd rather save the six bucks to spend on something else later, then the Tonga Toast tastes just as delicious as Captain Cook's quick service. Now, if you are at Rainforest Cafe and you see Tonga Toast on the menu, not the same thing. Come one, come all to the oddest bakery around, Gideon's Bakehouse inside Disney Springs. So Gideon's is famous for several of its different sweet treats, but it's most famous for those fully loaded, nearly half pound cookies. Year round options like the triple chocolate chip, pistachio chocolate chip, and the coffee cake cookie are just a few of the many flavors you can try here. But you can also try one of the seasonal cookie or cake offerings, which rotate out monthly. Or you can get those daily hot cookie hours that happen between 2 and 3 p.m. and 7 and 8 p.m. each evening giving guests the chance to eat their fresh baked cookie with the cool and creamy scoop of malt vanilla ice cream on top. Now, fair warning, this bakery is a real popular one, so it's not always gonna be as easy as jumping in line for it and quickly picking up your baked good of choice. More than likely, you'll have to enter a virtual queue and come back again later after shopping around Disney Springs for a bit when you get that little text that it's ready. But if you wanna to attempt to skip over the massive virtual queue, wait, Gideon's Bakehouse typically sees its lowest crowd levels at the very start of the day when it first opens around 10 a.m. So first we talked about the cheeseburger pods in Animal Kingdom, and now we're going to talk about those cheeseburger spring rolls in Magic Kingdom. Of course we are. The Adventureland spring roll cart is actually typically home for two different spring roll flavors at a time, which rotate out frequently. But the flavor we see here most often is the cheeseburger. Each purchase comes with an order of two golden fried spring rolls. But if you want to try the other flavor featured there alongside the cheeseburger one, you're more than welcome to order one of each. Caution though, the cheeseburger spring rolls have quite the cult following, so they can sell out before the end of the day, meaning if this is one of your must-eat snacks for your entire trip, then 
you're going to want to pick them up a little bit earlier, so go for lunch instead of kind of a dinner situation or right before fireworks or anything like that. Now, I'm curious, if you've tried both the cheeseburger pods and the cheeseburger spring rolls in the past, which one would you say is ultimately the better option of the two? Let me know in the comments because I'm real curious to know which cheeseburger inspired item should be the reigning champion. All right, I told you we'd be back at Nomad Lounge. For all you travelers and travelers at heart, Nomad ignites your sense of adventure in an environment that's both relaxing and welcoming and gorgeous. Whether you choose to sit inside or on the outdoor covered patio offering views of Animal Kingdom's Discovery River, you do you, they're both fantastic. Now, Nomad is well known for its variety of handcrafted cocktails, as well as its small plates that come straight from the Tiffin Signature Kitchen over there. But if you want what are possibly the best churros in all of Disney World, order the gluten-free churros that are featured here. It's on the menu all the time. Not only are these churros just the right amount of crunchy and fluffy, but they also come with a vanilla crema and strawberry guava dipping sauce, all for nine bucks. Now, those dipping sauces might change out, but the amazing churros never do. The peanut butter cookie pie from Main Street Confectionery in Magic Kingdom has been in my life for a couple of years now, but I still feel like it's a new favorite of mine because it wasn't introduced until right before Disney World's 50th anniversary kicked off, and that still doesn't feel like it should have been a couple of years ago because where has the time gone? But I digress. Let's get back to the peanut butter at hand. The peanut butter cookie pie is made with a peanut butter cookie, obviously, chocolate frosting, and peanut butter M&Ms, but it's a really thick cookie. That's why they call it a pie. Now, if you get this, you're going to need a bottle of water nearby to wash it all down because all that peanut butter is going to dry up your throat real quick. But if you can get past that, then you'll really enjoy just how soft and rich this one is. Plus, the peanut butter chips baked into the cookie give it that nice extra peanut buttery deliciousness. So if you haven't had a Sunday at Beaches and Cream, it's time to rectify that. We love ice cream when it comes to Beaches and Cream. Now this is a classic ice cream shop for Disney guests who are staying on or off Disney's Beach Club property. And while the diner style food at Beaches and Cream is pretty tasty, what you really come here for are the epic ice cream sundaes. The No Way Jose Sunday has long been one of my favorite Sundays on Disney property, even way before I started doing Disney food blog back in 2009. And it's made with chocolate and vanilla ice cream, peanut butter, hot fudge, peanut butter and chocolate morsels, whipped cream, and of course, a cherry on top. And I always ask for a lot of extra peanut butter sauce. Can you tell I like peanut butter? I feel like you guys might be getting that. Now, it's a hefty sundae for sure, but it's not nearly as big as the famous kitchen sink that serves four people for 36 bucks. The classic kitchen sink has scoops of vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, cookies and cream, and mint chocolate chip ice cream. Then it's smothered in every topping you can get at the restaurant and a whole can of whipped cream. It's definitely a crowd pleaser and a whole lot of fun, but you're gonna need your whole crew to tackle this monstrous creation, so be prepared to share. If you'd rather have an ice cream treat while you're on the go, Beaches and Cream also has a to-go window that features a limited list of fun shakes and sundaes, including a few boozy options too. Okay, no, this will not be the last time we're returning to Animal Kingdom Lodge during this video. This place is loaded with good stuff, but let's talk about a classic favorite dessert of mine and yours, the Zebra Domes, which you can find at both the Boma Buffet and the Mara Quick Service location. So what is a Zebra Dome? Well, basically it's an Amarula cream liqueur mousse enrobed in panna cotta-esque white chocolate and drizzled with chocolate and chocolate shavings. So all of this is sitting on top of a thin cake base. So it's kind of like a chocolate and amarula and white chocolate truffle, sort of a mousse meets panna cotta. It, there's a lot going on here, but it's definitely one of the most unique things you can get in Disney World. And it is a guest favorite and has been for, gosh, 20 years, 30 years. I don't even know how, <laughs> how long has Animal Kingdom Lodge been there. That's right, 2001. So honestly, I think these have been a winner for over 20 years. Now at Boma, you can eat as many of these zebra domes as you want any night of the week. But the only way you're gonna be able to get any during breakfast, which is of course when you should have a spiked mousse dessert, is if you order the striped and spiked cold brew made with Joffrey's cold brew, South African cream liqueur, coffee liqueur, and topped with a zebra dome. Meanwhile, the Mara, which is the quick service location at Animal Kingdom Lodge, usually has zebra domes in their refrigerated grab and go section. They're sold in sets of four for under five bucks. Now, Dole Whips, these are a Disney World rite of passage. They're cool, they're creamy, they're fruity, and they've been around the Disney scene for a good long while now. In their OG form, Dole Whips will provide you with a cup of icy pineapple yumminess, but pineapple isn't the only flavor of Dole Whip you can get nowadays. 
In fact, more and more Dole Whip varieties seem to be added across several Disney World menus each year. Here are a few newcomers that have entered the Dole Whip scene and stolen our hearts. The Pineapple Upside Down Cake at Aloha Isle in Magic Kingdom is finally back after its COVID absence, and it's served with your choice of Dole Whip Pineapple, Dole Whip Vanilla, or a swirl of both. Now, the Dole Whip Sampler at Swirls on the Water in Disney Springs features three of their current seasonal Dole Whip swirls, so expect a new sampler trio each time you visit, but everyone seems to have that pineapple vanilla swirl as one of the three. And the Simba Sunset from Tamu Tamu Refreshments in Disney's Animal Kingdom is a typical pineapple Dole Whip, but this one is topped with strawberry syrup. You can also get what's called the King's Cooler here, which is essentially the same thing as the Simba Sunset, but this version is spiked with rum at double the cost. Now, in a galaxy far, far away over in Hollywood Studios, you'll find a place called Ronto Roasters, which is an intergalactic fast food joint specializing in a Batuan delicacy known as the Ronto Wrap. The Ronto Wrap is the space version of your classic hot dog, but that description might be downplaying how good these actually are. The classic Ronto Wrap features spiced grilled sausage and roasted pork with peppercorn sauce and tangy slaw all wrapped up in pita bread. While the traditional Ronto is usually our go-to option, the plant-based version called the Zuki Wrap and the breakfast version called the Morning Ronto Wrap are also very solid choices that will not lead you astray. Just keep in mind that Ronto Roasters usually closes at 3 p.m., but if you're looking for a Ronto Wrap around dinner time, the classic version will become available over at Batu's other quick service location, Docking Bay 7, after 3. All you're going to find food-wise at Yorkshire County Fish Shop in Epcot is fish and chips. That's it, because that's all you're going to need. You want to know why? Because the fish and chips here are that good and that reliable. Not only are they fairly inexpensive, priced around 13 bucks, but they come all golden brown, fried to perfection with a hearty side of thick cut chips, aka fries in America speak. However, if you're not an Epcot and you're still wanting to track down some quality fish and chips on your break day away from the parks, Cooks of Dublin in Disney Springs also makes a mean fish and chips. These fish and chips are more expensive than Epcot's, priced around 16 bucks, but this Irish-inspired quick service does have more options to choose from other than just the fish alone, including another one of my favorite cheese dips of all time, the Dubliner Irish Cheese and Bacon Dip, which if I could put 51 things in this video, she would be in there. So the turtle brownie from Sunshine Seasons in Epcot is hard for me to talk about without immediately wanting one. Disney brownies aren't always my favorite things in the world. Usually they're pretty pedestrian, kind of boring, right? But the turtle brownie is a different breed of Disney brownie altogether. It's made with dense chocolatey brownie topped with serious caramel action. I am not kidding. The layer of gooey caramel on this thing is like half an inch thick. Not to mention the whole thing is covered in chocolate frosting and pecans and chocolate chips, making it a treat that's equal parts sweet, delicious, and absolutely addictive. Might also make you a little bit sick, so share it with somebody. Now I can't help it, I can't choose one treat at Léal Boulangerie Patisserie in Epcot because there are too many to choose from. Léal is a French-inspired bakery full of delicious eats, both savory and sweet. You can get sandwiches, soup, salad, pastries, macarons, even a full-size baguette for less than four bucks. We like to order a bunch of different things here and share them among the DFB group just to try a little of everything. Quick word of warning though, the seating for Layal is pretty limited, so you might wind up having to take your food to go. There are more tables outside, which might be your best bet if you just need a place to sit and eat before moving on with the day, but there aren't many, so just be aware of that. There's nothing quite like a cozy bowl of soup in a cozy restaurant nestled inside a cozy deluxe resort, like Animal Kingdom Lodge. Nearly every soup featured on the Boma buffet line is a winner, but we especially love options like the corn chowder, the carrot ginger soup, the butternut squash soup, and the coconut chicken curry soup. Okay, I lied. We like all the soups here. Boma is the soup king of Disney World, and I'll be taking no further questions at this time. Yes, I'm calling out the Daily Poutine in Disney Springs as being one of the best places to grab an order of the popular Canadian-inspired fry dish inside the Disney World bubble. But we are so lucky, my friends, because there are two other places in Disney as well that'll hook you up with some serious poutine that you might like even better. But first, let's start with the Daily Poutine. The Daily Poutine is a little kiosk that serves not just the traditional poutine option with gravy and cheese curds, but also seasonal and international-inspired options with toppings like butter chicken, Korean barbecue, even Thanksgiving fixins like turkey and cranberry chutney. But if you're looking for a solid poutine option while you're inside Epcot, there are two more places that you'll be able to find it here. 
The quickest place to find it is over at Refreshment Port, which, much like the daily poutine, tends to feature seasonal varieties of poutine based on whichever festival is currently going on in the park. But if you make a reservation for the signature restaurant, Le Cellier, inside the Canada Pavilion, you can try one of their signature poutines as well, including the Le Cellier Beef Bourguignon Poutine, made with fresh cut French fries, Gruyere, Beef Bourguignon Gravy, Garlic Aioli, and Truffle. So it almost feels like a crime to have breakfast in Magic Kingdom anywhere except Gaston's Tavern because that giant warm cinnamon roll always seems to be calling my name. It is huge, it's fresh, it's ooey and gooey in the center. It's enough to share, but you can also eat it all by yourself without feeling miserably full. But you wanna know how to make this pastry even better? Ask for an extra cup of icing on the side. Go on, you know you want to. We won't judge, cause we do it too. Ready for my favorite mac and cheese across all of Disney World property? Because the house-made mac and cheese over at Gasparilla Island Grill inside Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa is a perfect 10 out of 10 in my book, and I've had a lot of mac and cheese. The house-made mac and cheese is labeled on this quick service menu as a chef's specialty. And let me tell you, this pasta is special, all right. It is creamy, it's thick, and somewhere within that thick cocoon of cheese are heaps of classic elbow macaroni. It's the ultimate comfort food, and it's all yours for the taking for just a little over $9. You can also get a side order of this or a kid's order of it that's a little bit smaller too if you can't quite take that much richness in the bowl. Our number one choice for a sweet snack in Epcot has been Caramel Kusha over in the Germany Pavilion for a good long while now. And much like Layal, it's impossible for me to pick just one treat here because all of these fresh caramel desserts are absolutely delicious. Now here, you can find stuff like bags of very, very fresh, right out of the kitchen caramel popcorn. You can watch them making it there. The caramel cupcakes are probably my favorite favorite if I had to choose one. There are those boozy caramel squares and the classic butter bar, which recently got a pumpkin spice upgrade for the season that is delicious, but it also has a strawberry upgrade that it got for the summer. And these are all available now, all three of them. Now, if the lines for this little sweet shop are long, cause the smells tantalize a lot of folks, don't forget you can actually mobile order from this location too. So you don't have to subject yourself to waiting in the main line for your fresh caramel dessert. Now, whether it be a Mickey pretzel or a Mickey premium bar or a Mickey ice cream sandwich or a Mickey waffle or a Mickey churro waffle over there at Crystal Palace, it is worth picking up at least one Mickey shaped item during your trip. Will it be the best snack ever? Probably not, but it's a rite of passage for a lot of folks and it's a great option for kids and picky eaters who may not wanna try the more experimental snacky foods on property. And depending on your theme park ticket, you might not even have to pay for some of these Mickey shaped snacks at all. At select after hours events for the parks and water parks, basic Disney snacks are complimentary along with the purchase of the event ticket. So you could grab multiple Mickey shaped ice creams during your after hours visit if one of these snacks just didn't completely satisfy your Mickey shaped snack craving. ABC Commissary over at Hollywood Studios is a prime example of why you never completely count out a Disney restaurant that you didn't enjoy during your past visits. Once upon a time, ABC Com only sold very basic theme park fast food eats, but nowadays the options are way more adventurous and actually pretty good. If you're craving tacos, ABC Com has two different taco options, the shrimp and pork carnitas, which both come with sides of Mexican rice and refried beans. But if you'd rather have something with a bit more kick to it, the buffalo chicken grilled cheese sandwich comes on this grilled sourdough bread and includes not just buffalo chicken, but tons of cheeses like Monterey, provolone, cheddar, and cream cheese. It's also served with an extra side of buffalo sauce and your choice of side all for around $12. And that's basically the perfect treat. I know we just talked about how Lay All Over in Epcot is a place where you can find so many different French inspired desserts on a budget but there are even more sweet treats hiding in France that you need to know about over at L'Artisan des Glaces. One of those treats is the croque glacé, which is your choice of ice cream and sauce pressed into a warm homemade brioche. It's an ice cream sandwich that's both warm and cold and all sorts of delightful. And the best part about this brioche ice cream sandwich is that you can customize the ice cream inside it to whatever flavor you prefer most. You can also choose your sauce as well. Now, L'Artisan also makes amazing ice cream martinis for all you adults out there. Once again, you can choose two scoops of your favorite flavor. Get it served with a shot of Grand Marnier or whipped cream vodka or rum. Now, if that doesn't scream, I'm on vacation, I don't know what does. Okay, Le Cellier is back in this video for an encore, folks. This time it comes bearing soup. 
The Canadian cheddar cheese soup at this signature restaurant is made with Moosehead Pale Ale and Nooski's Applewood Smoked Bacon, and of course, lots and lots of cheese. I think there's a little bit of onion in there as well. That smoky bacon and that tang of beer are more prominent flavors in this bowl of liquid gold, making it a nice, comforting pre-meal appetizer. But hold on a second, you don't necessarily have to make La Cellier reservations in order to enjoy this one. You can also get it during the Epcot Food and Wine Festival over at the Canada booth. No fine dining necessary. Now, of course, food and wine usually goes from the end of July to mid-November, so it's a good chunk of the year, y'all. All All right, once again, we are eating more dessert at Epcot because this park is like an absolute goldmine for the sweet stuff. Another classic favorite of ours can be found in the Norway Pavilion's Kringla Bakery Og Cafe. I know, I know a lot of you have been waiting for this in this video, right? And of course, that's the school bread. This is a fluffy sweet roll filled with custard and dipped in coconut, which sounds pretty simple because it is. Nonetheless, it's a not too sweet dessert that makes us feel warm and fuzzy inside each time we take a bite because it's an old school Epcot favorite. All right, step aside average park nachos, Captain Cook's pulled pork nachos blow everyday chips and cheese out of the water. The pulled pork nachos here are topped with lots of melty cheese and spicy mayonnaise and fresh pico de gallo and slightly sweet pineapple salsa. And instead of using basic restaurant style tortilla chips to scoop up all these tasty toppings, you got nice and crispy homemade potato chips and plenty of them. These chips are ridiculously tasty. They're easy to share and will only put you back a little over 10 bucks. It's a huge meal. While a Mickey pretzel is fun to try and take pictures with, it may not be as substantial as you might have wanted. But that's what all those massive pretzels around Disney parks are for. These much, much, much larger pretzels oftentimes come with higher quality dipping sauces like spicy mustard and beer cheese. And if you want to try one of these ginormous pretzels yourself, here are a few of the places you can track them down. Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar in Disney Springs has the Air Pirates Cargo Loaded Pretzel, which not only comes with dipping sauces, but also comes with components of a charcuterie board with plenty of meats and cheeses to go around. The Navi-sized pretzel over at Pongu Pongu in Animal Kingdom is salty and chewy, comes with a side of beer cheese, and it makes a great savory snack before you jump in line for Flight of Passage. And the Bavarian Pretzel at Baseline Tap House in Hollywood Studios can be the perfect accompaniment to go along with your beer on tap. Okay, we're taking it back to the 1950s when the home cooking always slapped and mom never let us put our elbows on the table. 50s Primetime Cafe in Hollywood Studios is themed like a retro dining room with kitschy knickknacks and old television sets that play classics like I Love Lucy. Now, this is also a restaurant where your server isn't just your server, they're your family, so be prepared to be called out if you start misbehaving. Well, we could probably order the PB&J milkshake and the fried herb and garlic cheese here and be perfectly content with our meal. 50s Primetime also has some pretty decent fried chicken made by your Aunt Liz. Now, don't question it. You have an aunt named Liz now, whether you did pre-Disney trip or not. Aunt Liz's golden fried chicken comes with a large serving of dark and white meat chicken, roasted garlic mashed potatoes with chicken gravy, and a seasonal vegetable, usually it's green beans, all for 26 bucks. Now, honestly, this is another one of those easy to share entrees because you're gonna get a whole lot of fried chicken piled onto your plate. But again, it's good fried chicken with an extra crispy skin, lots of seasoning, and plenty of juicy meat, but yeah, it is super shareable. Now, if you want to start your day off on the right foot at Magic Kingdom, you may want to book a table at Crystal Palace. I already mentioned this in this video, but I think it gets a double mention. Don't forget at Crystal Palace, you get a full breakfast buffet alongside Winnie the Pooh and company. But the thing that is most compelling here right now are the Mickey shaped churro waffles. Now these are Mickey waffles that are basically dipped. I don't even know what they're dipped in, but there's a gorgeous cinnamon sugar crust going on here. Nice crunch on this one, super sweet, and they are still soft and fluffy on the inside. Just pour a little syrup over these bad boys if you even need it, and you got yourself a breakfast treat that you're gonna wish was available everywhere around the parks. Maybe someday they will be. All right, I think it's about time I order some food for myself because I'm literally super hungry over here. But before we sign off, here's that QR code again for our free guide to conquering any and all of the Epcot festivals, which you can also pick up from DisneyFoodBlog.com slash festivals when you get the chance. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.